Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble. We come to you from that city right below you, New York, New York, until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, look who's here. Oh, Albert. It's so good to see you. It's it's, it's Albert. Living down there in Florida. Yeah. How far is Mar-a-Lago from you? Uh, about an hour away. Oh, so there's enough distance between you and Donald, okay? Yeah, I've, I've passed it several times since I've been down here. Yeah. It's a that, nice place. That used to be owned by, um, I think, I have no the idea. Post family. The cer- okay. Yeah. The, the cereal guy? I think so, yeah. <laughs> C.W. Post. Mm-hmm. Used to own it, and I think he owned it, and then Trump bought it. They Good got, for him. Yeah, he always. And who's going to own it after Letitia James gets a hold of it? <laughs> oh. Well, you know, the funny thing is, Trump always bought things other people already had. The casino in Las in uh, Atlantic City wasn't built by Donald Trump. That right, was the, the Playboy Mahal. Casino. You talking about the Taj Mahal? Yeah. Okay. It was it was the Playboy Casino. And Playboy somehow ran into some kind of problems and they had to unload it because they couldn't, weren't being allowed to own a casino in uh, Atlantic City. Um, so Trump jumped in and bought it cheap. Okay. And then renamed it the Taj Mahal. Trump's Taj Mahal. Right. Of course. God, God forbid that. his name shouldn't be on it. Yeah. They have a case in New Rochelle, New York. There's a, there's a, a building. Trump Plaza. And there are other ones in, in Manhattan that have changed the name, but this Trump Plaza in New Rochelle, the, the residents there, I think there's a just under 200 residents, said, no, we, we want this name off already. This has got to end. Well, we have some friends who lived in a Trump building on the, on the uh, west side. On the side. west side, yeah. And it was a Trump something, I can't remember. And they petitioned the building to take the name off of it, saying, hey, we're all condo owners here. And eventually we're going to want to sell our condo maybe. And what this does is lower the value by having Trump's name on it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they took, they, they ripped the name off of it. So, you know, it says so it should be. What? And it's now called Mar-a-Lago, I think, isn't it? Mar-a-Lago? No. mar Oh, wait, what's the name mar I don't get the joke. No, never mind. Did I miss something here? I was, I was I'm saying. I'm an old man. Named, you have to explain jokes. They to me. renamed the Trump property Mar-a-Lago because they didn't want to be associated with Trump. Oh, I see. Is it called? I don't think it ever was called Trump's Mar-a-Lago. No, it's never been called Trump's Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, just like his golf course is where in in Florida. Um, Doral. Doral. It's just yeah. still called Doral. It's not called Trump's Doral, is it? I'm not sure. It may be. I'm not, well, it's it's difficult to believe that he would own anything that he doesn't have his name. You on. know, he's living, he's living at Mar-a-Lago, and by law, he's not supposed to live at Mar-a-Lago. Why? Why? Because there's a law that, uh, being what it is or whatever, uh, what they it? cannot have a permanent resident there. Oh, okay. It's, well, it's, it's meant to be a, a golf club. It's meant to be a, a, a social club things like that, but it's not meant to house people. For I mean, he can live there for a couple of days. That's that's allowed, but he's a permanent resident there. So, I think you, you're on a witch hunt, Alex. Totally false. Yeah, totally false. So, anyway, let's start. We, we're recording this on a Monday, probably a week before you're going to hear it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've started with the, you know, the trial. Right. Judge is giving orders to everybody. This morning he did. This yes. morning, yeah. So he, our president is now officially on trial. Ex-president. 
next president and being charged with criminal accounts. So this is a first, a real first. felonious accounts. Yeah. Oh, of course they're felonious. Mm-hmm. I just like to say that felony, yeah. felony, felony. Yeah, felony. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you know, God, I'm so happy. Uh, you know, he's running for president. Last, I'll have my chance to vote for him. That's right. It'll be, it'll, well, it won't be your last chance because if, if he doesn't win, he'll probably run again. Okay, I want to play something here. Okay. Play, play, play. And, and I want to know what this is. Just listen closely. I hope you can hear it. Otherwise, I'll tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, listen to this. Be quiet because it's on the same channel as you. Alex Bennett welcomes Albert Reynoso. Please welcome the greatest radio producer to cabinet. Here's Albert Reynoso. So oh, anyway, um, oh, uh, what is that exactly? I didn't hear that clearly, but I think that was a uh, a, a jingle yes. introducing me to your show. Mm -hmm. And that jingle was created in under two minutes by AI. Really? Yes. And <laughs> AI really sucks. Well, AI may suck now, but for it to do that, after what maybe a year how how long has chat gpt been out about a year B about a year yeah this company has been out for a month doing this for a month and if they can do this in a month just with ai and all i typed in was th the lyric part well here's another example of it folks Okay, well, enough of that. Uh, uh, so, so you what did you do? You did what's you went to the site, whatever it is. Yes, it's a it's a it's a relatively new new um, AI song creator called Udio. 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 U D I O. Hmm. And if you if you uh, put that on GabNet, you have to put somewhere on your on your site that Udio was used for that or something. Credit to UDO. Okay, we're credit we're, we're crediting UDO now. Yeah, okay. But but if you use it on a regular basis, you're supposed to. And it was completely free. This is a beta uh, program that they released about a month ago and it's and the music uh, recording community is going a little crazy because they can't believe that this is able to be done. And I'm not kidding you within two minutes and the production is is not not bad production it's pretty it's a pretty standard tune but that's only the first when i put the lyrics in that's only the first iteration of what they threw back you can keep refining it and refining it and finding i could have said in the style of uh, i don't pick any anybody um yeah in the style of led zeppelin and the style of uh, whoever you want but I didn't do that. So those are just first time uh, responses to my prompt with the lyrics. And I said I wanted one to be kind of like a, a 70s uh, disco and, and the other one to be um, kind of a indie sounding. And that's what it came back you, with. You know what I found, though? though it, 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 it's, it's almost there, but they don't have the mix down right. The well, listen, I, they I, don't have the mix down right. It was the it was the first time I used it. It was the first thing they kicked back at me, and all I did was type lyrics in to get that in two minutes. That's astounding. That's yeah. absolutely astounding to me. To me, because I, I I've written well, have and you, produced have music, you? and and it takes a long time. And yes, this is not this is not master quality that you're going to play on the radio necessarily, but it's still playable. 
it's still way better than than going into a studio and spending maybe two hours. You couldn't put this together in two hours. There's no way. There's yeah. no way you could do it. Yeah, I just uh, it wouldn't be something I would use because it doesn't sound. Uh, to begin with, I don't use jingles, but you know, it's uh, it it you know has a certain. If you go in and and you refine it, and you refine it, you refine it, you can get close to something that's acceptable. It's but I, I didn't I didn't send it to you, you know, to use it or 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 because it's that great. Right. Sent it because it was it amazed me that you could you could get this response in two minutes. Well, you know, fully, I I wrote fully produced and and you know with with no other prompting. I think it was pretty good. Let me move my microphone out of the way here. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it is. It, I used AI to write some spots for us for Gabby, uh -huh. but, and I wanted to see what it would do. And to tell you the truth, I was going to write some spots that day, and then I looked at what it spit out, and it was as good as almost anything I could write. This is what I'm saying. If you, you know, if you if you give it the right prompts, you give some AI the right prompts, you're going to get some astonishing stuff for the time that it's been out. I can tell you within five years, it's going to be crazy. And that, and that has nothing to do with prediction. That has to do with logic. Just knowing that this can happen now after a month. Well, being I can't say released. I can't say that I was that disappointed that it could write a spot better than I could. Well, I'm not. Uh, that know, it was nice to be. Either. And that's I, not, I used that's it. That's not surprising with you. I've seen I used you it. Like. There are a couple of promos we have on GabNet that were written entirely by AI. Mm -hmm. uh, I may have kind of tweaked it, but basically the AI was the was the basis. Now, when you say writing, was was it the copy that was written, or was it produced, or was the, the copy, voicing the done copy. as well? No, I had somebody that's voice it. You can ha you can have fully produced little promos with whatever kind of voice you like and music in the background done for you in minutes. In minutes, the whole thing can be done. And you remember, I used to have to put together promos for the show, and it would and, and I was skilled at doing it. And it would take me, I don't know, twenty minutes to to do something if I had to do something quickly. But this is amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, no, it, it 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 is amazing, but it has its limitations. I mean, I found now, that, they, that, that that while it wrote a spot, what I felt was better than I could write, it couldn't write it with the same sense of humor or um, um, feeling that I would give it. Does it make yeah, sense? But, but if but if it had a sample of your writing, if it had many samples of your writing, it could pick that up. Oh, it could imitate it. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's 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 the uh, the crazy thing about this whole AI. And I, you know, I, I don't like to jump on the bandwagon of all this kind of tech stuff it, it, because most of it goes by the wayside. But but this will be around for uh, forever. Well, and you know, you got to realize better. you got to realize that AI is is good for a lot of reasons. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're using it in medicine. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's very important where they use it there. People are bothered by any AI that might replace them. It's okay. going to happen. You know, screenwriters. It's, ha it's happened in our business. It happens a lot now in our business. A lot of, a lot of stuff you hear on, on, uh, on, on radio company radios is AI generated. Oh, yeah, there are some radio stations that are AI. Yeah. You know, so and they don't sound terrible. You, you and I can tell, but it's it's certainly they couldn't uh, replace the high quality product you and I turned out. Certainly not. Certainly <laughs> not. I mean, look at look at us sitting at home unemployed. It's <laughs> wait a minute. It can replace us. People may not realize this, but Howard Stern has been AI for years. <laughs> well, he uh, hasn't changed his act, has he? What's that? He hasn't changed his act, has he? I, d I don't know. I, I really don't listen. I have no idea either. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> he's just like, he's, he, uh, what, the few times I have heard him, it sounds like he's on remote control. You know, which is what happens to all of us when we're working on this. I'm sure I'm not adding anything new to this thing here, you know. 
I'm going to try. I'm going to see what I can do in the next few months. I'm going to see if there is a service where I can download audio with your voice and see if I can get some. And I'm sure I can do it. And see if I can get you saying something. Maybe doing doing some. Political. Okay, well that will be your assignment for the next get. Oh, well, that's my assignment. Okay. Yeah, but um, uh, the fact of the matter is that. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, AI can be used for good. It can be used for bad. And um, I think where art is concerned, you know, movies, television, radio, they can't completely do away with the human factor because the human factor is what gives it, it, gives it its uniqueness. And I don't think AI can ever make something totally unique. It has to use a previous template to base itself on. I'm going to say the word yet to you. Well, because yet, I think, but you I think down the road you are going to see popular programs. I'm not going on to. Netflix I'm, I'm not and going to. On, on the big broadcasters. Now how far away is that? Really how AI far away is that? Am I going to be alive still to see it? I would say they they start popping up within definitely within five years. That's that's what I say. And, well, and I'm going to go further. I may not be here in five years. You know. Oh, you'll be you're going to be here forever, man. Well, you're, you're, I don't know. <laughs> well, none of us knows. I may not be here in five minutes. I Never could know. be too. Yeah. Many people want that. Does it sound like I'm talking okay today? Uh, well, if you're not, I can get AI to replace you. No, well, because I'm my mouth feels. See, my AI will never have you saying this. Am I doing this okay today? Yeah, it could never complain like an old Jew. It's impossible. Now you've given me. Now you've thrown down the gauntlet. Now you've given <laughs> me a challenge. And not only do Alex Bennett's voice and cadence, but make him sound like an old complaining Jew. Well, no, but I mean, you don't have to make me sound like an old complaining Jew. Oh, the you AI. can just write the script of an old the complaining AI, the Jew. AI, there's no script. The AI does it. Okay. AI Bennett. You, you say, Alex, but do something in the voice of Alex Bennett as an old Jew. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't. That wouldn't be my prompt. No. Complaining about, and then I'll put something in there. What do you want it to complain about? I don't know. I would complain about my health. Oh, of course. How could I forget that? Yes. All hey. right. I'll, I'll, I'll have that. I'll have that done. Don't don't give me a bad time. I've got cancer. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I say that to Marjorie when she asks me to take out the garbage. I'm sorry. I can't take out the garbage. I have cancer. Listen, if you're going to sell it, sell it. If you're going to say I have cancer, never say the word cancer unless you whisper it. I can't take out the garbage. I have cancer. Because it's... Okay, I, uh, let me try that. I can't take out the garbage. I have cancer. That's it. That's it. That's okay. what you have to do. Yeah. You don't have to do it with any other thing. I had a person uh, here... I, the I other have day. heart disease. Who cares? We had a person over here the other day who's a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, but he loves wife. Uh, and... Uh, she, uh, I, I said, so how are you doing? And I said, well, it turns out I have, and I told her what I had called CLL, chronic. Mm -hmm. And then she told me the full name of it. And I said, yeah, that's it. She says, oh, uh, that's something you're going to die with, not from. See, there you go. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I've so far I've gotten cancers that I've been able to take care of. Yeah. And you didn't you didn't argue with her? Well, what do you mean? I'm definitely going to die of this. And, well, no, I just wanted More you know the fact that she agreed that I had a cancer, leukemia. Yeah. Oh, was it a form of leukemia? It is leukemia. Uh, oh, it is leukemia. It's chronic yeah. lymphatic leukemia, which in a third of the people never even has symptoms. And if it has symptoms, they give you one pill a day, and you're okay. Listen, that's another word you have to whisper. What? That's right. Anytime you say cancer or leukemia, when it relates to you, or no, actually when it relates to anybody, you have to whisper. Okay. Mm. Okay. It's that serious. Yeah. So anyway, I say, well, why are you making sport of cancer? Well, listen, why do why do we why do we uh, think that there's something solemn about that? 
People die of heart disease. People die of, of, of a lot of things, but cancer is always the thing. Well, I should use that as never had cancer. I should use that as the excuse in a lot of things. But I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, uh, have you been to the bank lately for any reason? I haven't been to the bank literally in years. Well, don't go if you can possibly avoid it. I'd never go. I went to the bank the other day with Marjorie to get her put on my account. So she's part of my account, right? Yeah. So if I drop dead, she has access to it with the certain monies we're getting coming in. I want her to have access to it. So then they say, well, it's spit back that your her social security number can't be reached. We can't use it. And I said, why? And he said, because she has it blocked. So we had to go home and unblock it. Oh, right. She has a one of the credit rating services blocking the un information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then she unblocked it and we went back. In both cases, we had to wait at least an hour to see somebody. I mean, because and you know why? This is a branch in Harlem, fairly large thing, not not small, one of the medium-sized bank outlets of Bank of America, and they've got three people working the whole thing. A teller, a guy who isn't a banker. They have a pen also? And a banker. What? Do they have a pen also or just a teller? No, I didn't see any pens. I don't think they leave pens out anymore. So no pen and teller, just a teller. Just a teller. Oh, ah, gotcha. ha. oh, you found a joke where I never found one before. Oh, really? Yeah. I came up with a bad joke that you never heard before. Uh, hey, I went to the bank and they didn't have a. I, they had a teller and they had, but they didn't have any pens. Pen. No pen and tellers. <laughs> uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, all right. You, and you can send that to pen and teller. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure. Well, no, their names are Penn and Teller, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, so uh, everything okay down there? In, uh, I suppose I don't really go anywhere. Well, go to I the bank. Go to the bank. You'll, you'll find it's not pleasurable any longer. I don't even have a bank, so I, I'm not going what to the bank. What do you mean? Where do you keep your money? In your sock? I, uh, I have several, uh, I don't even know what they're called anymore. You know, like Fidelity? Well, Fidelity is a, um, oh, well, Fidelity is just a, you know, you buy, you, you the in, massive it's, thing it's, it's who's a, able to do everything now. So okay. I don't get Can charged do, anything. There's no fees. There's no nothing. I get my cards. I do everything online. I speak to people online. They're quick. They're courteous. How, how, do, you, do, how, do, you, how do you pay Fidelity? What do you mean? How do I, mean, I pay? Fidel well, Fidelity, like uh, take care of your bills at the end of the month. Yeah, they have auto bill pay, sure. Really? I didn't know. I have Fidelity. Have look, look. I have, they have everything. I have we'll talk outside I have, of it. I have, yeah. I have Fidelity here. You don't have to go to a bank for anything anymore. Really? You guys take care of everything. You hmm. can get your credit card through them, and they will give you cash back. Not points, cash back. You can get uh, your money. Uh, uh, um, what do they call it when they put the money in? From your checks. Um, interest? Automatic, uh, automatic, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. You can have them pay yeah, your, your bills. They do everything. They do everything. But do you also have them investing your money? Absolutely. Oh, okay. That's what I, was, I took my 401k and converted it into a, into a Fidelity account, which was a good idea because mm -hmm. Sirius is now selling for about, oh, I don't know, a dollar less than I got rid of it for. Boy, they're doing but terrible. I'm holding on to that because I'm, you know, hoping that that'll be a big, big thing. Do you, do you have some some uh, 401k? I have a there? couple of shekels in uh, in Sirius, but my 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 good stuff is is Disney, which goes up and down. But Disney owns everything now, so so they're not going anywhere. Right. Exactly. Holding on to my and and my Disney stock has has uh, split several times, and that's a great thing. Splits. Well, Disney it goes up, for a while splits, there was a very good stock to have. It's still not a bad stock. No, but it was at one time it was really a killer stock. Yeah, yeah. You know? But they divested in some of their uh, broadcasting properties. But listen, they have what do they have now? They have um, uh, uh, Star Wars. They have uh, the Wizard guy. What's his name? 
Harry Potter? Harry Potter? No, that's right? Universal. That's Universal. Oh, is it Universal? Yeah. No, they no, not ha- Harry Potter. They have the other one. Um, oh, I forgot what it's called. My mind is... Penn and Teller? They don't have Penn and Teller yet, no. <laughs> but they might. You never know. But if They'll they open a the bank, they could have a Penn and, and a Teller. That's right. Yeah, yeah. right. da dum boom ba dee bum ba dum boom Hey, listen. Again, we're running out of time. And you have to go help your son, your stepson... Uh, uh, put in windshield wipers. Right, the sequel to last week's. Boy, is um, your life exciting down there in Florida. Yeah, yeah. And I got, and even better than that, I got two for one coupons on the uh, Culver's Double Butter Burger. So that's that's tonight. That's going to be great. A Culver's Butter Burger? It's the best. It blows away all the other burgers. I have oh. a great place up here for a burger. They make it well, with, that's just, make that's it just with pickled, pickled onions. Yeah, but that's a one-off place, right? This yeah. is a chain. Excellent oh, chain. What's it called? Curvis is phenomenal. Culver's. I never saw it anywhere else. They have custard, this frozen custard for just, oh, it's great. Oh, boy, that's exciting. Come down to visit me. I'll, I'll give you one we're, of my We're coupons. coming down. We're coming oh, down. Come on down. You know, come on down. We got to travel somewhere. And come on seeing down. my old friend Albert would be a, a, a gem. Uh, we'd look forward to it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Albert Reynoso, former producer of the Alex Bennett program and currently my best friend. Is that still on? <laughs> Which means your days are numbered. <laughs> hey, no, don't, don't, don't do that to me. Don't do that. To me. I'm going to be the longest. Fr- so this is somebody I'm becomes be the my best, best friend you ever had. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Albert Reynoso. Thank, thank you so much, Albert. You bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. The best producer I ever had, ladies and gentlemen, and and I say that honestly, and I've had some good producers in my time, uh, but he was just the best. Anyway, hello everybody, how are you? Here we go again, another useless uh, attempt at doing a podcast. Uh... (laughs) I got two people waiting. Two people. Oh, well, last night we had like nine, I think we hit, right? Yeah. So that's pretty good. Anyway, I'm having coffee. Uh. For I have to wake up here. Anyway. Oh, wait a minute. I just looked, and now we have four people waiting in the room. Okay, four? Wow. All right. Well, let's... Uh, Let's admit them here. Okay, here we go. There they go. And uh, uh, there's, uh, there's Jeff, and there's uh, uh, Alan, and there's Josh, and there's Charlie Wallace. Uh, and, uh, hmm? So that's me. Yeah. Yep. But Jeff is having a problem connecting his audio. I wonder what he's doing it on. Is he doing it on a phone or is he doing it on an iPad or? It's some kind of computer. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm thinking of buying? I'm thinking of buying, they just came out with a new uh, iPad that's a M4 iPad, which is supposedly very powerful. And I'm thinking of getting it so that when we go away, you know, on vacation, I can do my shows, but I'm going to get one of the 13-inch ones with lots of memory in it. So, like about two thousand dollars worth, and I figure that'll be better than if I take a, uh, a like a, an Air a, a iPod Air or iPad. A, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the one of the uh, laptops that they have. I think mm-hmm. it's a better idea, and I'll get it with the uh, little uh, uh, keys keyboard that goes on an iPad, and I'll be fine. You know. Anyway, we just lost Jeff. Oops, he'll be back. Yeah, and well, he does understand you don't have to sign off to sign on, you know, but he does. Anyway, how you all doing? Good. Yeah? Good. yeah. Well, I'm lucky to be here. Hmm? It's yeah, raining a little huge bit. huge thunderstorm rolled through, booming, shaking all the buildings and lightning flashing all over the place, tornado warnings and all that stuff. So I'm lucky to be here. Okay. Well, did, did you hear about your governor? Oh, what did he do now? Oh, what did he do now? You ready for this one? There's somebody 
who shot somebody to death uh, over the uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The what do you call it? Movement. The uh, um, oh boy, January Black 6th? Lives Matter. Oh, that. And okay. he shot well, him to death. Surprising. He shot him to death because he felt threatened. He was found guilty, I believe. The governor uh, pardoned him. You're governor. Yep. When is Bud Abbott going to get back to working with Lou Costello and leave you guys alone? <laughs> That's good. I would take Bud Abbott over who we got now. What? <laughs> I would rather have Bud Abbott over who we have now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No question about it. But anyway, he uh, he pulled that one off. So yeah, I vaguely a, remember hearing about that. Yeah, so that happened in the last twenty four hours. And then today, um, uh, what's his name? Um, God, I'm terrible with names now. Uh, the guy who's testifying in the Trump trial. Um, oh, Cohen? No, no, he didn't have that. Yeah. No. Yeah, he testified Come. today. He, okay. uh, he he testified today, and they they kind of tried to make mincemeat out of him, and they kind of did a little bit, you know. But it's nothing that's going to hurt the case because I mean everybody knows that that Cohn's a you know a liar, and that yep. he he went to jail for lying for Christ's sake. Yep. You know, um, we know all that. That doesn't mean that the testimony he's giving is a lie. You know, but they they, yep. they they felt the necessity to vilify him and make him, you know. What they were doing is everything they could to get him mad, and he wouldn't get mad. So good for him. Good on him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I don't know. Who, anybody have any idea what's going to happen in that case? I think anyone really knows. Huh? I think, I think one of two things, or uh, three <clears throat> things. They'll be found guilty. He'll be found innocent, or there'll be a hung, a hung jury. Yeah. No. I I say it's closer to a hung jury than I'll finding him guilty. One. But you know he's <laughs> been found guilty a couple of times here in New York City, so he this is not his town. Oh. You know, and that's what he's claiming. So the news but, is reporting that. Some of the skyscrapers in Houston suffered damage today from the from the storms. Yeah, coming. this is one heck of a storm that came through. Or pe some people were dead in Houston from the flooding. There are people dead from the flooding. Wow! In Houston, yeah, it's on the news right now. Mm. Yep. Mm. Well, our parking lot was flooded, so. <laughs> so you couldn't play softball right. today, right? Nope, I'm supposed to be out there right now, but. Not 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 well, in the lucky, water. Lucky us, you know. Yeah. I'm always praying for rain. <laughs> well, you got your prayer today. Yeah, got an answer. Wrong state. Yeah. No. Hello, Brian. No. Hello, Alex. I noticed you got your uh, your uh, camera a little more lit today. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just moves <clears throat> move some things around. My angle's different, but yeah, we yeah. Yeah. Good. I usually do zoom off of my work computer, but mm -hmm. uh, work's getting yeah they're they're cutting ties with Zoom. So you said they're doing away with they're using what now? Teams, Microsoft Teams. Oh, teams. Microsoft oh. Teams. Okay. Yeah, for as a professional platform, it's much more yeah usable friendly. How much is it like Skype though? I mean, Microsoft owns Skype. Well, it's not, nothing like it. Yeah, it's not really like because Skype. because mm. yeah, if we're in a meeting right now, <clears throat> usually you'll have the people maybe off to the side, and then you'll have a display for you know for for like a PowerPoint or for mm. you know for stuff that we're going through the presentation. So, but I the 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 video call portion of Teams is just one element to a multi-platform, right business suite. I mean, it also has instant messaging yep. uh, off of that, uploading of files, uh, uh, 
private teams pages just for certain people collaboration whiteboards it's it's got the whole well actually zoom has a lot of those features too no but but like like josh is saying if we're talking about something <clears throat> and then josh says yeah i'll get back to you when i get the guy's name and then we hang up we're done with the call there's mm -hmm. a chat and you'll probably have several chats for different meetings, different groups, and then he could chat cool. say, oh, that guy's name is Alan, that asshole. Right. I mean, you can attach a chat just to a meeting, just to a call. You have instant messaging with people outside of meetings, you know, just regular instant messaging. It's also an instant messaging platform for businesses, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, to be able to do that all the time. It has all kinds of other, you know, most places... You can click on someone and, you know, look so up their I, organizational I the chart, see who they work for, see who works for them, the whole thing. I assume the company where you work, Josh, uses that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both places that I've been in the last 10, 12 years use Teams. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if Teams is going to give Zoom a good run for its money. Well, I don't think so because... It's it's basically business driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, Teams is not really designed to support or even marketed towards like individuals. I mean, right. it's it's a collaborative suite that's basically built for business. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I mean, it you know, like I said, it does have a video call feature. I mean, if you're chatting on there with your boss. And it's going back and forth. Sometimes they're just, can I just call you, you know? And they just click a button and they video call you instead so you can stop typing back and forth or whatever, you know. But you don't have to do that. You can, it has a lot of, you know, well, it has a lot of stuff, you know. You can tell when someone's read your message. You can see who all has read the message if it, if you know, if it's got five people on it so that you can get mad that they haven't responded yet and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now, how about, how about um, uh, um, let me see here. Uh, how about Skype? Is anybody using that anymore beside Amy? Never. <laughs> Never. Well, you uh, know, for its time, Skype was wonderful. And then they screwed yeah. it up. You know, Microsoft so, took it. Uh huh? So was MySpace. MySpace was off the hook back in the day. <laughs> you know, I found that for here, it worked really well. You know, I was able to use a thing that we have um, uh, that you could then take each of the individual, each of your e individual pictures, and I could just put them in a place. I, you know, yeah. so that I could arrange everybody in a certain way. It was, it was, it was very good. But I stopped using it just because it wasn't as simple as Zoom. Zoom is, you know, very simple. You know. And, yeah. A moron, a moron uh, could could operate Zoom. Oh, excuse me, Jeff. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, how come you didn't pick on I thought, gonna, I, I thought you were going to say another host that used to host the show after this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was never going to go with Zoom with him, you know, because I knew that it would just be a whole new learning curve and I already had trouble with the other learning curve. So, yeah. You know. On a daily basis, he couldn't get the damn thing to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, I, I could do it with, uh, with uh, Amy. She's very computer literate, you know. And uh, she, she, won't, she won't teach him how to use it either. <laughs> no, but, you, but, but she said that but she put up the fact that she wanted to go, maybe go to Zoom on her show and that you guys said no. Yeah. Well, the, the only reason I think is that Wayne, who's who's a part of uh, you know the little group she has, Wayne doesn't want his face broadcast. He was on your show a couple times, and then he decided you know since you put it out there after the show's over with, the people could see the faces, and for some reason he didn't want to do that. So that's why he stopped coming. Well, also here. because Wayne's in a witness protection program. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So and Wayne, Wayne can be like this too. <laughs> yes, it could be like <laughs> that. Could be. That's an improvement. You ought to do that more often. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's funny? <laughs> oh, now I, sorry, I did that one by accident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, the, the funny thing about Wayne and saying his face and all that. Remember the the photo that that uh, the Zoom bomber used his face. Remember his face came on there. We really thought it was him for a second. Oh and then yes, I do remember nasty, that. Nasty yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. His face, yeah. the only face that somebody actually used. For. Yeah, but anyway, so. Um, so that's why we didn't change over to Zoom mm -hmm. on on the intersection. So yeah, well, I mean, she she just said that there were people that didn't want to do it. So, and Skype is just as easy for her. Well, the one thing we would lose with Zoom is the ability when she signed off that, yes. to sit around and chat, which Skype yeah, allowed. Yeah, we continue usually the after show or whatever you want to call it. Well, it was never meant to do that, okay? I'm sure. It's my Skype, by the way. <laughs> it's my Skype. I paid yeah, for well, that. By, yeah, by the way, I was the one that figured out that it could do that, and I had no idea how. You know, well, it's just that I, if you don't sign, if, if yeah, nobody signs well. off, she can sign off. If nobody signs off, you can still keep talking to each other. Yeah, we did it on Jack's show. I was talking to... Mm -hmm. Mike Allen a few times, and I said, she, Jack has signed off. How's this happening? And Mike's like, hell, I don't know. i never seen it before. But once you sign off, you can't sign back in. Yes, you can. Oh, you well, can't. you can't as long as somebody's still in there. Right, as long as somebody's in off, there, they can let gone. you in. Hmm. That, that's like a, that's a carryover from their Teams platform, too, you know. Uh, people can hang up in teams and other people can keep the line open and talk about the people that just left. Or I whatever. actually I actually still use Skype uh, with uh, Bubbles. Mm -hmm. uh. um, you know. I thought that was getting fixed. I thought I thought like months ago he was getting a phone and Oh, well, <laughs> he did. yes, but, I see the internet. but then he got he, he had the uh, the uh, uh, what do you call high-speed internet? I don't know how high speed it was, maybe three, 350 or 320 or something. I don't know. But he had a fast, uh, he, he got it. But it was a test. He could have it for a month, and if he didn't like it, he could stop it. And guess what he did? He stopped it. He stopped it. He's back, to, di he's back to dial up. No Dude, way. How many here have dial up still? Uh, would you, would, no? I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it, but uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get. I'm thinking of getting a faster speed here on my on my internet. I'm thinking of going up to two gigs. Uh, Do you really need it? Well, I'll tell you where I need it. Uh, when I when the show's over and I have to upload and download stuff, it'd be double the speed to upload it and download it. You know. Uh, so, uh, you know. Why don't you just go to 10 gig, then? No, they don't have yep. 10. They don't sell 10 gig. They do here. No, they don't. Yeah, it is. No, it's advertised don't. on Comcast. Wait, wait, am I, what, what am I? Am I? No, wait a minute. I'm one terabyte. Excuse me. Two terabytes. Oh, well, this is a, it's a 10 gig or 10 terabyte. I don't know. I don't, no, I don't it, think they have 10 terabytes. I think it's 10 gig. Well, that's nothing. Oh, well, then it's a 10 terabyte. I don't know. It couldn't be 10 terabyte. They don't sell that. Okay. Except to businesses. Well, it's made for businesses. It's not made for home use. I have the maximum home use around here, and it's one, one terabyte. One ter I guess. terabyte. That's what I have. Excuse me. I'm just yeah. out of it now. I I can't get. I don't. I, I can't, don't need I it. can't get a straight thought out. Yeah. But it's. Uh, yeah, it's uh, my, my. I'm going. I may go to two terabytes, just so I'm faster up and down for just just business stuff that I do. You know. So. Yeah, I don't need it. I don't even need this. Yeah, well, I need. I just need this because. Well, I mean, it, let's say you know what happens if Marjorie is watching TV, using the internet, of course, and I'm doing a show. It doesn't slow the show down at all. Yes. And we could have all the TV sets on in the house, and it wouldn't slow down any of them. So. Well, mine was, I had 600 megabyte, gigabyte, whatever. And for $5 more, they'd move me up to the, the top speed. Yeah. So I, I spent it, and I don't notice any difference. 
I can still watch all my stuff on porn. Well, you don't notice any difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. How much, how much speed do you have, Brian? Do you know? At home? Yeah, I think it's one terabyte. One terabyte. Uh, how about you, Jeff? Oh, I'm asking the wrong guy. No idea. I'm asking the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brian, do you have Comcast also? Yes. Xfinity, Comcast, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, 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 Charlie, what kind of speed do you have? I have 400 gigabytes, I think. See, and he doesn't look any different, right? J mm -hmm. uh, Josh? I really don't know. It just works. Yeah. Much, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't have any trouble, you know. Uh, I can call you while my wife is streaming a show or something, and we, you know, we don't have any trouble with that. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well, let me go over. I want to do something here. I don't normally do this, but I have nothing to talk about tonight. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, uh, Drudge. Let's take some callers. Huh? Like to, let's take some callers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me? Yeah. Am I on the air? <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> you know, Amy's going to be gone next week, right? Yes, right. Uh, is Josh going to take over? <laughs> well, you talked about that last week. Yeah, we haven't figured out exactly how to do that, though. Oh. You know, I mean, I'd oh. like maybe to do it on a on a, a Friday, but the problem is, you know, that we have to, we probably have to do it through here, through my machine, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I want to stay up that late, mm -hmm. you know, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, hey, I just, oh, this is good news. For all those people that have been griping about how bad the economy is under Joe Biden. Yeah. What happened today? First time ever. What? Got a record, huh? Oh, the Dow 40, hit 40,000. 40,000, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dow Jones, yeah. Not bad, huh? Yeah. It's it would be great if the president had control <laughs> over the over the uh over the stock <laughs> yeah. market. To a certain he'll take, he'll take credit for it just like every president does, but he really has no control over. Well, he does have a certain amount of control. How? How? Uh, when they raise, do things like raise the interest or lower the interest rates, that helps the Dow. Yeah, but he still he doesn't he doesn't do that. The, the well, Fed. He, hi he, he hired the guy that does it. Actually, <laughs> not the guy that did that. The, the, the guy that's in charge of the Fed right now is a Trump carryover. Yeah, he, he, is he? Yeah, yes, he is. Uh, yes. Should be. I think they get a ten-year term. Oh, they they have happens? a term when they're appointed. Oh. It's kind of like it's kind of like the FBI director. The FBI director. Gets okay, a well, thanks term. to Donald Trump for getting us up to forty thousand. Then let's well, I'm sure he'll take credit for it. You yeah. betcha. <laughs> no, but other things have to exist too. I mean, I think that actually people underestimate how good things are under under uh, yep. under Biden. I think that right. uh, what they do is they say, "Oh well, you know, cost more food costs more at the grocery store," and they think he has some control over that, and he doesn't. No. Nope. Well, that's. I mean, it's somewhat you know the case, but you know the economic news I've followed you know pretty well this year, and they cover it pretty well in the mornings on Morning Joe. Uh, matter of fact, they were going over some of these numbers this morning, and you know one important critical thing to remember though is that. Inflation particularly matters only as much as how wages keep up with it. Yeah. You no. Know? And wages have outpaced inflation this past, during his presidency, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so by a little over almost a percent, you know, I believe is, is the national average. So while things do cost a bit more in some sectors, uh, which are down this year, year over year. They are down d uh, pretty good in almost every sector uh, this May as compared to last May, for example. Mm -hmm. Also with the rise in, uh, you know, wages, your buying power, though, hasn't really been hurt. You know, the value of your dollar versus how far you can make it go hasn't been hurt. But the perception is there that it, 
somewhat have, you know. I mean, if, you know, the, I don't know, the box of cereal that you buy every week last year was four ninety eight is now five ninety eight. You, <clears throat> even though you're making some more money, you still, that pisses you off, right? Because you'd like to make more money and that yeah. stuff still costs the same so that you would have a lot more money, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so uh, it's kind of, that's where it's a matter of perception versus reality. But, you know, in reality economically the united states is outpacing really everyone in the world in you know growth and in in its robustness but the perception but yet, among yet, a lot of people you can't tell the, uh, i'll go to you in a second jeff you can't <laughs> tell the average person out there when they go to the grocery store and milk costs more this month than it did last month that things are better correct but they mm -hmm. probably are i mean right. okay things aren't better how much more are you making this year Right. than you made last year. Fair enough. So in California, the minimum wage went up to $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So that means people at McDonald's are got to be making a minimum of $20 an hour. Well, I mean, it's, it's just that people are uh, somehow feel that uh, it's the president can do something about the price of milk. And he really can't. I don't know, know. They get the stupid bird flu thing that's probably driving milk up. Well, now it's driving yeah. milk up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I was, Jeff. I, what about, look, there's a lot of people who are not as rich as we are, as, as our group. In other words, I, I think everybody here can get as much food as they need. Okay? Nobody's been starving because they can't afford food. But there is some people who get kids and whatever and it's a it's a tough life. Yes. And right. Absolutely. And should we be doing something for that? Should the president be doing something? Can he? I don't know. But I mean, I, I what, think what do you level, uh, Jeff? What do you think the president can do without having the right wing say, "Oh, we're giving away money to people who don't deserve it"? Yeah, that's. You know? Uh, right. I mean, constitutionally, he has the power to do on his own very little in, in regard to those types of things. You know, mm -hmm. programs and whatnot that would help those kinds of issues are generally going to have to come through legislation. And passing legislation right now <laughs> for something yeah, like that it. is not going to happen. Work. Look, if you want to blame, know. if you want to blame what's going on at the border right now, to Biden because he's had four years to try and fix it. Go ahead, blame him for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you want to blame him for not being as proactive as he should be about the Isra the Is Israeli situation against Gaza, then you can blame that on him. He has control over that. But if you're trying to blame him for the price of pork, I'm sorry. It, it just does. He has no control over that. And as a matter of fact. If there are forces that don't want to see him get reelected, they could be gouging prices just to do that. You know. Well, let's let's so, take. You know, let's, I'll, I'll take Phil Meyer since everybody knows him. <clears throat> he loves to bring up that under Trump, gas was two dollars a gallon. It's around six dollars a gallon now here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And so, but here again, the president doesn't have anything to do with that. No, he doesn't have anything to do with it. So, I mean, Trump happened to hit a time when gas was $2 a gallon. So what? I mean, you know? OPEC is the problem. Absolutely. And we don't control them. Yep. You know, some of the, you know, but, you know, under President Biden, for example, I mean, some of the moves that he made that definitely he had the power, you know, that helped people and that some of the things that he can do is, for example, some of the things that they did with student loan repayments. Now, I'm not talking about the stuff that got beat in the in the Supreme Court that got beat and it got thrown out the window. But the stuff that they did after that, where they said, fine, we, we don't have the power to do this because we got beat. They fundamentally rewrote the Department of Education's guidelines for how they collect the debt. Not forgiving it, none of that, but they rewrote the guidelines. In other words, for graduate students, you know, you used to pay, your payment could be up to, you know, like 20% of your discretionary income. 
by executive action and things, he was able to cut that to 10%, which took some people's payments from $1,000 or $1,100 a month down to, you know, $470, $480, a much more cash. You know, that was $500 a month cash money. And and I know, because I mean, I'm, you know, living through some of this. And my repayment plan, I was eligible for some of that kind of stuff, if I want to, can change dramatically. I mean, in cash. And you know what's kind of sad is, again, they they extended some of the payments for some people to let it take a number of more years to get some more money out of them, and then they will forgive it after that. Um, they did some other things. They're not giving anything away, you know, giving people free education. In most cases, what I've noticed with the, the formulas and things that I saw, like for mine, I'll end up paying all of the principal back and not really a bunch of the interest. Well, the banks that loan this out are backed by the government. They're paid by the government if anyone defaults. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't need to be making 8 and 9% interest rates off people's educational loans to begin with. So they're not giving them anything away. They're just denying some banks for making a lot more money. They're not, no one's going to lose anything. But look, you know, you've got Republicans crying foul over that. The state of Missouri, the state of Kansas, the state of Texas, and a few other states are already suing in federal court to try to have this overturned. So you got to make decisions on your voting based on that. I mean, that's a real thing that happened that literally instantaneously put money in the hands of people yes. that they'll put into the economy. Alan? So one of the things he did was <laughs> it, it, the people of us that are on Medicare all know about the donut hole or the, the gap. Well, the donut hole. The donut hole is. Let me explain. Is on medicine. It's on not on. It's not drugs. a Medicare. It's That's, not. It's on. No, medicine. but it's part of Medicare. It's. it's so part if you of if you let's say uh, you you have uh, any any of the prescription plans, uh, you can buy them privately or whatever. Uh, there is a point at which, and I can't remember where it is. It's somewhere around four thousand dollars. Where there's about a fifteen hundred dollar donut hole, where you got to pay all of that every time you go in and get your medicine. Out of pocket maximum under Medicare right now is eight thousand dollars. Okay, but Biden has changed it in twenty twenty five. It'll go down to two thousand. Oh wait, a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. What hmm. are you saying? Uh, what I'm told. I'm, I'm going to say two things. One is Biden has changed Medicare that is going to save anybody that's on Medicare. A lot of people are poor on Medicare living just on Social Security, maybe, or whatever. On Medicare, right now, your out-of-pocket maximum is $8,000. I think, it, I think it, it, your out-of-pocket maximum. This is I, just, I, this Here's is what just I've for, been led to believe. This um, is just for prescription drugs. Yeah, but, not no, but I, what, I, what I have, I mean, <laughs> if I use it, I don't use it. I get all my drugs from Costco at price, at their, okay. at their price. And it's cheaper, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, and uh, but if I use mine, first of all, the first five hundred dollars I pay for out of my pocket. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Then uh, the next thing is uh, uh, that it goes. Then after that, they take care of the whole thing or whatever. I can't remember how much. A certain. I, I, I don't use it that often. But when my you get to like forty three hundred dollars. You then hit the donut hole. When you come out of the donut hole, then it goes on forever. It doesn't go to eight thousand. So, so the way the way I, I just went over this, and it, it, it took a Medicare class to see what was going on. So you get you you get to the donut hole when they have used up five thousand dollars, five thousand and thirty actually to be exact. You get to the donut hole, and that's. Not not your out of pocket expenses. That's your what what the drugs cost retail. Mm-hmm. When you get to that five thousand and thirty, you get you go to the donut hole. I'm going to point out something that Biden did that's going to help senior citizens here. So, and then in the donut hole, then it takes the retail amount, not the not the out of not uh, your uh, the re, I mean the retail amount goes bye bye, and now you 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 can get into the catastrophic, which is what you were talking about, out of the donut holes called catastrophic, and then you don't pay any co-payments. 
But most people never get to the $8,000 out-of-pocket range. No. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. Yeah. But Biden has changed that starting January 1st, 2025. There is no not going to be a donut hole anymore. And the maximum out-of-pocket is going to be 2000 I'm hungry. I want donut holes now. Adrian, you want some donut holes? <laughs> no, it's true, but you know, part of the problem is they haven't done a great job at, at communicating some of it. I mean, the other gentleman that works on shift with me is in this situation with his student loan repayments and all that kind of stuff and everything. And I showed him this information the other night, and he's like, Man, you know, now I can afford to do it, and I'm not looking for ways to fucking scam him out of it and all that, you know, because this is this is real for me. And he's like, so how'd this happen? You know, I, I just showed him a news article that it, it was done by executive order by Biden and instantaneously. And I'm like, look, these Republicans are suing to, to have it basically done away with. And I mean, immediately he understands I need to vote for Joe Biden. Right. <laughs> I mean, oh, those are those are so the like big... literally if the if he doesn't get reelected, I, I could be out another five hundred dollars a month. Those are those mm -hmm. are two things. What, jo what Josh is talking about, what I'm talking about, that Biden did good. Yes. He's going to save seniors in prescription drugs. Your maximum out of pocket, even though a lot of seniors couldn't afford two thousand, but two thousand is the maximum out of pocket, and then you have no copays. I mean, these are well, really there's, one, there's one other thing that he made. did. There's one other thing that he did. Uh, I uh, I have uh, chronic leukemia. Uh, uh, Nothing that's going to kill me, but I don't have any symptoms yet. As long as they don't have symptoms, they don't treat it. But if I do start having symptoms, they do treat it with one pill a day that takes care of it. it completely, you know, minimizes the, uh, the problems with it. However, the pill costs something like $10,000 a month. So okay. uh, under this year, under this, but month, no, what he's done is he's made it yeah. so th that's one of the drugs that is scheduled to only be a maximum payout of two thousand dollars a year. That's another thing he's done. So yeah. he he's helping the seniors on Medicare by making the out of pocket maximum two thousand instead of eight thousand starting next year. Now I'm going to ask you and, a question. And the donut hole is going to be gone. Yeah. I'm going to ask so, you a question though. How many old people have to? Thing. How many uh, pe uh, old people have two thousand dollars to spare? That, not anymore. Not a lot of people. I agree with you, but this is a big step forward for Medicare that that Biden has what done. We've never done, and, and we, I agree with Josh. We've this got, thing about with 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 the uh, school stuff is a big deal. A lot of people paying for school loans. That's a big chunk of change out of your pocket. Listen, we have the highest military budget of any country in the world by about fifty billion dollars a year or something. I, I don't know how much. Trillion. Just the nine other top ten. Yeah, countries. well, you can blame Some the Republicans for that. Yeah, what I'm saying is, if we suddenly have a reasonable military budget, reasonable military budget, where we're still being protected and all of that, we could afford to ensure everybody in America and, and not have anybody to, worry can, about their health bills. Right, and, and we can afford to give everybody that wants to go to private school free free schooling. Yes, and still have enough left over to have a pretty good military. Absolutely. You know, but I, everybody I, I, goes, oh, anytime we need more, more money to go to something, it's got to go to the military. What? Yeah. Why? We to begin with, we got all those missiles sitting in silos right now that we never fire. And if we go ten years without <laughs> firing them, we have to put new ones in. Got to replace them. Yeah. yeah. You know what kind of waste? What kind of government? Why don't waste we test them out? Huh? We haven't lit, we haven't lit up we haven't lit up any area in a while. Right. Right. Russia, yeah. Moscow yeah. would be a good place to send one. Yeah. The only trouble is they would retaliate. So. But, you know, some some tangible, you know, changes that he has enacted to the extent that the law allows him to, um, you know, even though they're being challenged. I mean, the, the student loan program change, for example, is the same exact kind of change that they've made three times under uh, previous administrations um, by creating programs called the pay the payee program, the repayee program. 
the IBR income based reprogram, and now the new one. The first three came and went, and no one batted an eye or gave yeah. a damn. And then he changed this one, which is modeled after the other three. All they did was change the percentages. Instead of X percent, you'll pay this percent, X, Y, Z. And all of a sudden, oh, it's unconstitutional. We're suing him. And he's, he's buying people's votes. You know what? If that's what you want to call it, then call it that. Yes, he did buy my vote. Okay, fine, if that's what you want to say. And he's not even I in school. I vote for people who I think will help me. Right. If you call that purchasing my vote, well, also, call it what also, you want. Also, I mean, what better money to spend and to give out than money to people to go to college? Right. Yeah, or, or Medicare. Or, uh, although I'm getting to the point where I don't believe everybody has to have a college education. Certainly but, they don't. But certainly, but, no. but certainly anybody who wants to go to college should be yeah. able to go and, and right. Brian should not have to pay the bill on it. You know, the government should say it's on us because no, once no, you've no. got that sheepskin, you go out into the workplace, you make a better wage, you're going to pay more taxes, pay more and taxes. it all comes yeah. back to the government. It does, right. you know, it's, a, it's, it's an investment the country is making in other people. You know, It's an investment the country is making in themselves. Yeah. I mean, regardless, you know, I, I mean, of course, as you know, I believe, you know, education is a a good fundamental thing for for people to have, whether they're going to necessarily apply it in a professional career, white collar job or not. Hmm. You know, I mean, in in my opinion, you know, many on the right have long been against a well-rounded education because educated voters typically tend to understand what they're saying. A lot of times a lot of horse shit, you know, yep. I mean, they sort of rely on a non-educated non voter. And I'm not saying stupid. I just mean not necessarily really having an understanding of history, of, you know, the, the constitutional issues and things like that. They just kind of go along with what they hear and, yeah. you know, vote for someone based on other factors. Right. Which Right. But the perfect the perfect example is make America great again. Yeah. If you ask people on the street who Trump. made that up, who do you think they say? Trump. Trump, they Trump. It was Reagan. I know. No, no. But I say you ask people on the street. In fact, you ask Trumpers, and they're going to say Trump said that. I, Trump I mean, is that, the person who said it that. It was they Reagan, don't even know their but history. I believe Reagan got it from somewhere else. Too. Yeah, that that well, slogan yeah. was used in the the like the the late teens and twenties. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but another like era this. of yeah. anti-immigrant, you know, isolationism, post World War One attitudes and. And things I'm like that. Like, and, 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 you know, second of all, I mean, it, it indicates that America isn't great when, in fact, in my opinion, America is indeed a leading nation in this world, if not the leading nation. And if some people don't think so, that's OK. But what I'm saying is it's not the, the dumpster fire shambles that it's made out to be. It's not the inauguration speech where you say this American carnage stops now. A carnage? I mean, I'm sorry, but carnage to me is a trail, uh, is a is a train derailment with people dead and things littered all yeah. over the ground. That's carnage. You know, everyday American life is not carnage, in my opinion. Yeah. Not, I mean, not certainly not right now. You know, I mean, that's where I see that as just it's just so negative. Well, America <laughs> is not as great as it used to be, but the reason for that is is that Americans have made it that way, you know? I mean, I think we've, we've kind of let ourselves down, and all this infighting we're doing in this country is destroying us. You know? I mean, my point was that, like what Josh is saying about maybe other people aren't as smart or don't know history and all that stuff, and it's like, like that's an example of, that's like the biggest thing that Trump has is make yeah. America great again, and you ask people on the street, you ask Trumpers and Trumpers, say that he came up with that yeah no right. i mean this, this, yeah this this record's been played before yeah you know and it was was success you know so i mean you, you know i mean there is just a naivete about some of those you know I, i'm gonna assume people. everybody on this show has gone to college and has a college degree with the i exception don't i of don't me. yeah i was gonna say nope. with the you don't either brian i don't I, oh, I, went really? a, I went to a, oh. a, a, an academy during high school, but I don't have a degree. 
No. I went through. I, I went made, almost made two years of college. Oh. And I got okay. out because I was working in the radio business already, and I said, why should I waste a, a seat for some, that somebody else could use and, and get into college and use? I don't need it. I'm already working in my chosen well, I, profession. I have both sides of that argument. I mean, you know a lot about my background, even off air, and you know what I've come. You can certainly have. It's not required in this country. I mean, and for a lot of things, it's really not even needed. Well, but I think we made it too big a deal. Hurts. Well, I think we made it too big a deal, and I I, I suggest we start going to another system. Colleges and universities are for people like yourself, for instance, who wants to learn about the Constitution, about the history of the country, you know, those kind of things, right? Or teach it. Or wants to be, yeah. But if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, where should you go? I would say a trade school. Yeah. Okay? Because, but nobody, everybody goes, I don't want to be a doctor and go to a trade school. Yeah. Well, the college is supposed to be teaching? somewhat of a trade school. Huh? Yeah. What? The college is supposed to be somewhat of a trade school. That would be a trade, and you go to college to learn that trade. I mean, it's just an upper level trade. Yeah. That's all. Look who's there. No, you're not going in and learning how to weld, but you're learning how to be a lawyer. Who's that very lovely lady you have there? <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> he puts her out of the way. <laughs> So when I was when I was a sophomore, junior, senior in high school, so I went to while I was going to high school, I went to Peninsula Electronics Academy. Some of our classes were based around like our math and stuff like that was based around electronics because when you know early eighties you think electronics right. is gonna be all the, the big thing, right? I had a mentor who worked for who worked for Ampex. I had uh, I had my junior senior summer, I had a job at Spectra Physics. And in my senior year during school, I would go to class three, three classes a day, and I go to Hewlett Packard, yeah. uh, just doing just doing wiring assemblies, you know. But getting into that kind of business, so that's for not, me, that's, that's all I yeah, that's definitely that. In high school, why, why waste those years in high school? Get get the trade start school started at high school level. I had a girl I was dating, her, a woman I was dating here in New York, and she was going to computer school. Now, this was way back when. This was like back in the uh, early, late, late 60s, okay? Well, everybody went, oh, computers? What are you doing? Punching little holes in paper and <laughs> stuff like that. And, and she was learning things like coding and stuff like that, you know? And when the boom started hitting with computers, guess who was at the top of the pack making the bucks? It wasn't somebody that went to college. Somebody Harley who went Fiorina. to a computer school. Hmm. You know. well, in high school, we had what we called the <clears throat> or the vocational training was RTP right. was called regional training programs, mm -hmm. and you did those to get into a trade. And you yep. you know you had the same. It's the same thing. It's just they got away from doing those. Yeah, and they started going towards the colleges because, sorry, but corporate America pushed everybody that way. Yep. And corporate America required degrees, and corporate America said we don't we don't need these other people because we're outsourcing all our stuff to the other side of the world, mm -hmm. and that kind of pushed everybody that way, and now it's coming back. In the yeah. last ten years, I see it coming back. <clears throat> like I said before, I've said this a hundred times that our school down here has a career path for vocational and it has a career path for academics. And when you go into high school, you go one way or the other, you sign the contract, and if you want to get out, you got to talk your way out of it and exit your way out of it. And that's the way I like the way, I like a, the way it, they ran the school here. And it's a public big, school. They have a big training center here in Fremont that does yeah. just that, that allows the kids to go through the training to learn a vocation. Yeah, Not back in the... 50s and 60s, you could take a vocational programs like you come out, you can be a plumber, mm -hmm. or you come out, you can right. be a your, a, your a, classes a that you took were woodworking, metalworking, yeah. all that stuff. I took Carpet, those classes yeah. just as regular classes. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, I remember my shop teacher, you know, you built a dustpan and, and, a, and a toolbox. And when you were done welding with it, but, he took it and chucked it across the shop. And if it didn't make it, you failed. <laughs> and then you went and tried to kick, well, no, but do they have, <laughs> kick do, the teacher's ass. <laughs> but they don't have shop classes for computers. They What's that? You know, I mean, they, do. they do. That's called a lab now. Yeah. yeah. It's called the lab. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Same thing. But I mean, I just, I just think that uh, I was talking about to Marjorie about this the other day that we we put too much value in a college education. If you want to learn stuff, you, everything you ever want to learn is in a book somewhere. But if I wanted to become a radio announcer, if I wanted to do go into radio, uh, it didn't. You didn't have to have a college degree to do it, sure. but you do today. Yeah. Why? Well, Why? Back in the day, you walked out of high school, you could go and do what you wanted to do, and that's what I did. Well, I uh, wanted to be a truck driver, which is uh, not really, you know, uh, a big deal. Uh, but uh, the you walked thing. over, you found a truck driver, and you said, "Show me how to do it," and they showed you how to do it, and you ended up doing it. And if that's what you like to do, you continued to do it. And if you didn't, you went and found something else to do. Most the of the other time, night, the other, there was a lot of things like that that you could do back in the in the yeah. you know 60s and 70s yeah. like like exactly what brian was saying it was the same type of deal y you could go and find a mentor and they would teach you how to do it and it was acceptable for that to happen and then you would find your your way through it and become an expert at it yeah but what and, i was what i was saying to marjorie the other day hmm. is that i also don't like the idea that for instance a kid graduates high school and uh, now they say to you, okay, where do you want to go to college? What do you want to study? What are you going to be? Wait a minute, you're only 18. Yep. How are you supposed to know what you want to do at 18? I, did, you know, I knew what I wanted to do at 18. I knew what I wanted to do when I was 14 and 12. I knew I wanted to be in show business. That I knew. Uh, probably your daughter know, knows, that she, uh, Kevin, that she wants to play a musical instrument, you know. Uh, but I, 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 to have to make that decision when you're 18 years old of what you're going to do for the rest of your life is rather stupid. I say, let people take two, three, four years off, you know, let well, them find themselves in the world that. and see what they want to well, do. That's, that's why kind of, you know, like learning a trade and learning a trade doesn't necessarily have to mean a hands dirty trade. I mean, IT is a trade or whatever. Yep. And then getting so, out so's, of school. So by the way, so's being a doctor, so's being a lawyer. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, right. then, but then getting out of high school, for example, and going into the workforce, I guess what I'm saying is we should pivot a little bit away from traditional college and more to like adult type college. It's like we're getting, and not maybe online, maybe not, to where you go out and work a few years and then, you know, you start going to classes, getting your management degree or whatever, so that you can say, well, I'm in this trade and I kind of like it. Yeah. But I don't just want to be the IT guy that goes to your desk for the next 30 years. Eventually, I'd like to manage a group of people who go to your desk. I want to be their boss one day. But I'm not going to be their boss today because I'm 19. And I'm not going to be their boss just because I'm 22 and I have my degree. I mean, that's you're not qualified yet. You know, mm -hmm. those degrees would carry a lot more weight, in my opinion, if you got them, you know, I'm not like the way I did. I mean, I, you know, was... 22 or 23 and all of a sudden decided <laughs> i fucking can't do this forever you know i don't like it so i could maybe i could at least be boss one day and i went to school at and night also today, or whenever you know, it was available you know the, the, the idea is that if you graduate college you're going to get a good paying job and that's <laughs> just not true anymore I you know. can go pay that yeah. that how how much does it cost to go to college now tell me brian how much is it going to cost to send adrian to that's college a, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find oh, out. Yeah, how much did it cost you, Brian? Brian? How much? How much? You, yeah, and your daughter got a lot of little scholarships and things like that, but how much did it cost you out of pocket to send her to college? Kevin. Kevin. Oh, you're saying Brian. I'd... Oh, Kevin. I meant Kevin. Yeah. <clears throat> they look a lot alike. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's about. Fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars a year. Okay, so we're talking oh two hundred thousand dollars to what? Jeez. Get a, a sixty thousand ah. dollar a year job every hey, year, year you're gonna get a scholarship. Yep. Save now. Mm. Yeah, even that doesn't help. My kids had scholarships. They still had to borrow fifty grand. Yep. 
Yeah. And you went to school at a time when it was uh, not as expensive as it is now. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but the cost of living was lower and everything else. It was still expensive. Yeah. Yeah. All relative. You know, some people like me that went out, got out of high school, you know, and started going to college right away because I wanted to go into medicine. And so I took biology and microbiology and I got degrees in them. But... I was by the time I graduated from those programs, I was a police officer, and I was happy doing that, and so I didn't go off to medical school. See, perfect example. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, you you get some kind of trade, and then you go out and you work, and then you can get some kind of education as you, as you go along. You know, the foundation of it, a BA or or whatever, and something. Because mm -hmm. in that time period, you know, you can, like I said, you can kind of learn. I'm not as into that as I was. But this education that I'm getting can be a basis for several other types of careers and get me in the door and I can move into that, you know? I mean, why do we hire people in a lot of ways to teach our kids that are 23 because they have a degree in education? Yeah. Are they really experienced, great people? And by the way, to be maybe, a teacher, but to maybe be, a, not. Be, be a teacher that pays what? $60,000, $70,000 a year? In most right. cases, probably. You have to have you have to have a master's. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to have a bachelor's to teach. You don't you have, have to, to, to teach, to but to go no. further, you have to have a master's. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. After a few years, in fact, Marjorie, Marjorie, brainy girl that she is, woman that she is, she has a master's. She never used it, but she had a master's. She taught for about a year or two, and yeah. that helped her get a little more money as a teacher. And that was it. Mm -hmm. like I mean, me, come on. I have two bachelor's degrees and I never used them. <laughs> so, yeah, see. and of course, now they're saying, they were just saying this last couple of weeks, I've been seeing articles about uh, how corporate America is backing off on the requirement for degrees. They're saying, well, we're not, you know, McDonald's and all these other big corporations are saying they're not that important right now we're going to start looking you can the, still you know, sell hamburgers that. without a degree well i'm talking yeah. about the upper you know the upper offices yeah, and the yeah, admin yeah, administrations yeah. and stuff they're yeah. saying you know we don't we don't necessarily need to see a degree for um a, 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 you know a janitor or something like that you know and that's what I mean, that was somebody, what was going if, on because i was i was hiring people with stupid ass requirements like that you know it, it was ridiculous yeah you know, you our, a mop, our HR yeah, people were saying, well, it'd be nice to have a degree. I go, he's a freaking transportation planner. He doesn't need a degree. Yeah. You know, he's just right. scheduling On the trucks. job training, right? Yeah. On the job yeah, training. Yeah, that's, that's what people learned. That's the best way to learn, if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. But, you I know. I mean, it's uh, logistics. No, but, but son, you have to figure out what you want to do when you're 18 for the rest of your life. And you yeah. have to go get a degree for that. Happy but days. Alex, you never had kids, so you don't know how it is to have an 18-year-old stuck in your house not paying any bills. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? And college is the thing you ship them off to to get rid of them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. That don't happen either. It. He's doing <laughs> they keep it. keep coming back. He's doing okay, and he has a nice sports car, too. And so, you know, you're doing okay. Yeah. But anyway, Ryan, I'm playing. Ryan, I'm playing the theme right now. Get your car built quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because okay, mine's, take, mine's taking. Mine's taking a long time. So I'll Mine, have to sell it anyways. Mine's taking a long time. How many kids mm -hmm. did you have to send off to college? Kevin? Who? Yeah. You? Me? Yeah. No, I, I've had. I've got three kids, and and two of them went through community college, so I paid for that. Uh -huh. But they only got, uh, they went three years, and then this one's going to a full-on, full-blown university. Oh, okay. And she'll go four years. <laughs> Good. Well, anyway, that's it for tonight. And uh, 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 Thank you so much, uh, Charlie, for raining the game out. Uh, and uh, thank you, Alan, for being here tonight. And a big thank you to Josh, who will now spend tomorrow night working, because uh, he earns a living, folks. Uh, Jeff, good having you here, my friend. Uh, uh, and, uh, and Brian, always nice to have you here. And, of course, that special appearance by her nibs. And uh, finally, a uh, big thank you to, uh, to Kevin as well. Uh, 
uh, uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as we say good night to those fine people. Uh, and they'll hopefully a lot of them be back again tomorrow night, maybe with some extra added people as well. In the meantime, Amy is next with the uh, intersection. Call her on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. <laughs>